Hello and uh, very warm welcome to Dr. Zia Ahmed YouTube channel and here uh, I'm on Facebook live. I shall be discussing with my students today one poem of uh, Daud Kamal and that is an ancient Indian coin. The title is very fascinating but the poem is a little bit complex so we shall have to spend at least 10 minutes in order to understand this poem. Let me show you the title and the poem. So it is here, the title and the poem. Uh, you can see that the title is given as an ancient Indian coin and the poem starts from here. It's not in the form of stanzas so that is why we shall have to make little parts of it as we read that. So first of all, I need to talk to you people about Daud Kamal. He is one of the best and good ranking poets of uh, Pakistan, uh, especially writing in English. He has contributed a lot of his poetry in making Pakistan literature in English as popular as possible. He is well known not only inside Pakistan but also outside Pakistan. He was born in Srinagar, Kashmir in 1935 and then after 1947 he had to come back to his uh, place where he lived most of the time that was at Abad, Pakistan and got most of his education and so uh, he is the one who has been living among the mountains, among the cold hilly areas, icy areas and he was also able to observe the life there. For example he could know the people who are residing in those areas, the simplicity of those people, the unsophisticated lives of those people among the plants, among the trees, among the mountains, gushing waters, beautiful streams, all these things he noted. His poetry is not most of the time a happy poetry. He is trying to tell his people what losses has come, what problems have occurred in their lives, what they have lost and what they need to get out of that. So in that sense, his poems are quite unique and they become representative of that Pakistan which is not only beautiful but also describes the story of the change which has taken place from simplicity to complexity of the modern day's life. So let us start the poem and see what is there beautiful and enchanting for us. The first few lines I'm reading for you. Gazelle embossed on a lapsided moon. The Santa had only been rendered insensible by the outrage in the garden. A sadhu watches his toenail grow in his Himalayan cave. So, so far let us talk about the poem. The image has been created with respect to the space and time. First of all, a female deer is, is created on a structure which is moon-like structure and it is not having smooth sides, it's lopsided and alongside that one can also see that the garden is blooming, is shining, is full of the, of the of the spring season, Vasanta is the spring season, some pre season flowers and that is why garden is outraging with all these things. And in such a situation, a very simple Satu is present in his cave of Himalaya mountain and possibly has been busy in his worship for a very long time, not taking care of himself and that's why his toenails are growing up. So from here you can see three, four things which are happening. One is the gazelle, but that is not real gazelle, it is embossed. And then is the moon, it's not the moon real one. Uh, when the poet wants to tell us is that, but actually it can be the presence of one gazelle also in the moonlight which is working behind the scene. In the moonlight one gazelle is present, the time is that of the night and later coming one line will also show that time is that of the night. And the time is also that of the spring season when gardens are fully blooming they have become mad up, up to some extent because of the beauty of the spring season, the flowers, the colors, the smells or the scents. And in such a situation, peacefulness of a sadhu can be seen that is present there. So actually it is the peacefulness, it is the beauty of those mountains, it is the kind of mysteriousness in the mountains, the animals, the moonlight, all these things contribute a lot to create an image of satisfaction, the image where one can feel the presence of nature, that nature which is inside the man also, outside man also, that natural environment the man is present in. But the issue is that man has lost contact with that. Let us see 
what type of contact has been lost, where the man has gone, what is the problem which he is suffering from. For this purpose, we need to go to the next set of lines. The poet says, men create their own gods, and a learned Brahman is exempt from all taxation. But a piece of gold does not take one very far. In these three four lines, we have the example of a Brahman. This Brahman can be taken symbolically, that is somebody who is rich, somebody who is powerful, somebody who is uh, knowledge-wise powerful as well, someone who is leading something, who is at the standing position. That type of persons now are not sincere with their creeds, with their beliefs, with their religions, and that is why they have created their own gods. And definitely, this god is god of mammon god, that is wealth god, money god, and that's why they are avoiding any kind of taxes and are saving the gold with them. But the poet says, this small piece of gold which they could be able to save will not take them far. It will not help them at all. So that is why the poet is trying to contrast the situation with the above situation that in the beautiful natural environment where human beings could live peacefully, at that place the people have lost their satisfaction, contentment of mind because they want to save their money, because they want to cheat the people, the system in order to save the money. And as a result, they, they are able to collect little bit of coins of gold, but still it will not take them far. So that is the kind of change which has come in the human beings. Here I remember Wordsworth, where in one of his poems he says that we have become out of tune, we are not ready to wash the scenes of nature, setting sun, rising sun, and that is why we become out of tune. The similar kind of reflection is available in these poems also. Next set of lines, let us take them and see what does the poet say here. He says, out of seven jade goblets, they dug up, only one was whole. These three lines should be separately discussed and attached to the previous lines. One of the examples has been given, that somebody was digging the land in order to find out the goblets. But he was unable to bring these goblets out. They were broken, only one could be brought up. So it means that all the things have to be destroyed, all the things finish, their life is there, and even if human beings try to save them, they cannot because most of the time they would fail in comparison to the forces of nature. As for example, the man who tried to bring the jade goblets out of the earth in order to find money, get money, he was unable to get them because only out of seven, one he could find which was full. So the efforts of man may not be rewarded in that way if he goes behind the gold, if he goes behind his greed, may not be rewarded in that way. He will have to make a lot of struggle. But yes, if he tries to live among those peaceful places and tries to become in harmony with nature, he may be rewarded more. The poet says, the king's hunting dogs are better fed than most of us subjects. He tells us the situation, that situation which is terrible in these words. In this world, we have got very different standards of living. For example, the poet is telling us that the food is not available to the humankind. The food has become scarce and the hunger possibly may be here and there. But the king would feed his dogs with, with a lot of meat and they will be better fed. And as compared to the people who, whom he is ruling over, they are not fed in that way, but the dogs are getting more. And that is the irony of situation, that man tried to develop himself, progress himself, in order to become self-sufficient, in order to feed himself, in order to clothe himself, in order to become a person who is prosperous and happy and contented in this world. But his progress is not given him that much. This has given more to the places where it was not needed possibly. For example, king's dogs are getting more. And the next two lines are also in the same fashion when the poet says that, uh, that the uh, look, the Indus is choked with stars and the glaciers are beginning to melt. So in that way, the change which has come because of this rapid progress is that now not only the idea of uh, discussing the food for the dogs and not for the human being can be supported with the help of the poem also, but it can also be talked uh, like if you go to the markets, you find mannequins standing uh, before the shops, clothes shops or boutiques inside them or outside, they are wearing the clothes. They are soulless. They are you know, the people who are not having any life, they are just uh, dummies. But they are having caustic clothes in them. And a lot of human beings may not be even able to dream of wearing those clothes. So it also, this example also matches with the example of the uh, meat uh, or the food for the dogs and not for the human beings. So in this way, the poet is trying to make us realize that the progress has resulted in this way, not in the way as the human being wanted. 
and another loss of the progress is here as the poet is telling us look at the indices choked with stars and the glaciers are beginning to melt although the beauty of the night is reflected inside the water of indus indus river the stars are shining in the sky but they are visible there and one can see them one can imagine them one can feel the beauty of these things but one can also see that glaciers have started to melt they have started to melt because of the rising you know temperature a global warming and so they have started to melt a lot of water is there which was not in that quantity as it used to be in the past time but now it's more the poet says he is, he is sad at this loss you know choked with stars can also be interpreted in a different way that river indus is filled up with certain materials which possibly were not there the water is there it is reflecting not the sky but the stars or the shining objects so in that way possibly he talks about the overflowing of water in in this river also the poet says that in such a situation i try to calm myself but my tongue is smothered by its own thickness the poet says he is sad he is unhappy he is not peaceful he is not comfortable in such a situation and he wants that he should become comfortable but he says that he cannot utter the prayers because his own tongue has become bigger in size because it is dry inside his mouth and cannot utter out those words which he wants so, so, so the loss is that much that the poet like the river is choked and is unable to talk and as a result he says what is left now it is solitude it is silence it is the stone only these three last words are really very tragic words because the human being you now are suffering from living in solitude isolation is not words worthy in isolation or solitude it is the solitude where human beings are separated from one another and have no company of each other no friendship no love for each other that is why the solitude is there silence that when cannot listen or one is sounds are there but the ability to listen to these sounds to understand these sounds to love these sounds has finished and as a result only stone is there harshness and hardness is there no particularity is there so in this way uh, dear students the poem is really very complex it's very not only simple but also complex and it takes a lot of energy to understand it although the language of the poem is simple but there are some words which construct the images these needs to be discussed again for example gazelle embossed this is the uh, position of gazelle then is lopsided moon adjective very beautiful adjective has been used to make us understand what is the condition of the moon is it small is it round is it in a in a horn shape what the shape is to make us understand that shape in order to make us saudation in order to make it even more he uses the words like himalayan like sadhu like vasanta in order to indicate that this is an indigenous writer and is representing his own people which are indian and pakistani is south asian people he says that he uh, is going to discuss some brahman so this word also goes to talk about hindu religion and and the word is possibly metaphorical because brahmans are all those people who consider themselves different from other people rich from other people or very much uh, you can say complex from other people and then the poet also uses many other things which make us understand that the poem is carrying a lot of messages in it a lot of things in it for example the poet is trying to say that okay that we have developed we are not like sadhus we are like brahmans we are collecting gold but then he says that in this race what has happened we have lost a lot now the food is available to the dogs this goes to show the anti behavior of human beings for the human beings but very kind behavior for the dogs and this is the thing which has become popular in this world that rich man has lot of food has lot of money he can feed his dogs and cats in such a way that the ordinary human beings will be feeling very much upset that they are not able to get this type of food and as a result of all these efforts what has happened the glaciers are melting now water levels are increasing now so the poem has become a type of eco criticism as well and environmental behavior has been shown in the poem concern of a common man has been shown in the poem by the poet and the poet says that he himself wants to sing a lot but he cannot and ultimately what he's feeling is the feeling of solitude is the feeling of silence is the feeling of stone dear students as i said in the beginning that uh, daud kamal uh, has lived a long time in the hilly areas of hyderabad and has been attending institutions which were situated in the in the hilly areas so that is why the reflection of all these things is quite dominant in his poetry this poem is specific about that 
but it was also does talk about the theme of loss, the theme of isolation, the theme of poverty of humanity, the hunger of humanity, and the direction is the misdirection of man where he's, where he's going. So in this way, the poem can be understood in many ways. One of the ways is to discuss what has happened to beauty, what has happened to the companionship of nature and man, and what is the result of all that. We have discussed these things in this poem. So when you write critical appreciation, include for its introduction, a uh, little bit elaborate, then talk about summary of the poem, and then add some of the explanations from the complex lines that I have also explained, and then go to the stylistic aspects, that is the language, the words, the phrases, the punctuations used by the poet, or one can even go far if some similes or uh, metaphors are there, and one can also talk about the ending sounds, which is not possible because the poem here is in not in stanzas, it is in the continuous form. And uh, in the same way, one can also go for the themes which are used there. So this will complete your critical appreciation. So that was all from me about this poem. Hope you understand something and clarify something. More efforts can be made with other sources of help available online or in the libraries or in the shape of learner teachers around you. Thank you for watching.